Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. At long last today I want to talk about drawing hands. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking for this video um, and I've been uh, promising it for a while so today we'll uh, we'll get to it. Uh, so before we get into that, I'm just showing you uh, the latest thing that I'm working on. And this is a page from uh, the upcoming Space Captain Miyuki, which is a one-shot from Pixie Tricks Comics. That's Giselle Legacy's Pixie Tricks Comics. Uh, Pixie Tricks has a stable of web comics that they do, and, and you could find out all about them at pixietrickscomics.com. And uh, they also do some print one-shots, which are available on their uh, web on their comic, uh, on their online store. So, um, this is drawn on real paper. This is in pencil. And this is all ready to go out and get inked. So, we've got some aliens there, and, uh, that is Miyuki herself holding them off with, uh, her laser gun and then going into action. Okay, so that is what I'm currently working on. Again, Space Captain Miyuki. And this is actually a follow-up, a second one-shot to last year's first issue, which I believe is still available. You can still order it from the Pixie Tricks Comics uh, uh, store, online store. So uh, pick one up. And as always, you could always let me know what you think in uh, the comments below. Okay, so here is some paper. And now we can talk about hands. Now, hands are a very common difficulty for a lot of people. Everybody complains about hands. As, uh, as usual, my approach with anything is whatever is giving you trouble, you simplify it, you break it down, you make it into a shape that isn't so complicated. And really the complicated part is about hands are the fingers. Uh, because fingers uh, can just take on so many poses and the hand itself can move in so many angles. So what I recommend to people is when, they, when they're drawing hands, start with the body of the hand. And I'm here, I'm using, if this is the wrist, this is the arm. I'm using a sphere as the, as the basic shape for the body of the hand. Now, if you want to, some people would, you know, you see this in some art books, some people would rather use a cube, a square, which I guess allows for, um, you know, if you really want to nail down the perspective on the hand, the, uh, the cube might be the way to go for you. Uh, for me, I prefer... I prefer the sphere because it's a, a softer shape. It's a more organic shape. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a, a more flexible shape that you can use. But yeah, it, it's really, it doesn't really make a difference. These shapes are, are almost placeholders. Now, as I said, the, the fingers are what give us the, the problems. So when it's time to add fingers, when you're studying the hand, when you're getting used to the hand, what I recommend doing is just fusing the fingers into one shape, almost like a flipper, almost like, like you're drawing just a mitten. So this is the hand, and these are your fingers just solidly fused together into one shape. And uh, the thumb, our buddy the thumb, the thumb is just hanging out. Thumb is just hanging out on the side. So basically we have this kind of flipper shape. Again, you could, you could do this with whatever shape you're using for the body of the hand, whatever shape that is. So what I always recommend to people when they are drawing hands, when they're practicing to draw hands, sit down and just draw lots of mittens. Draw mittens, draw that body of the hand and attach the mitten shape. Okay, just like that, just like that. Body of the hand and then the mitten shape. And move down here. Body of the hand 
and then that sort of mitten shape. And the thumb, the thumb is, is kind of back up for the fingers. So if your fingers aren't doing anything, the thumb's just gonna be kind of hanging there. Now, of course, eventually you are gonna to wanna to deal with fingers, okay? And, and we, we take that easily too. Okay, so once we've, we've played with this mitten shape and we're comfortable with it, well, what, we, what we're going to do with the mitten shape is we're going to separate it into the four fingers, okay? Like so. And while I'm, while I'm practicing my hands, I'm not going to worry about articulating those fingers, okay? Okay, I'm not going to, and that means I'm not going to worry about posing the fingers. I'm just going to, I'm still kind of treating the fingers as though they're just one big shape. I'm just adding some separations to that shape so that it does look like there are fingers there. You know, even even here too, we can. And I'm and I'm keeping my fingers really simple. You know, don't get caught up into like little details, like all the folds of skin and and fingernails and that sort of thing. Don't worry about that just yet. Just just get comfortable with this shape. Now we are going to have to take a moment to look at exactly what we're looking at when we're looking at a finger, and really. And I, I've spoken about uh, simplifying things. When we're looking at a finger, what we're really looking at is this cylindrical shape. Your finger is pretty much a cylinder. And inside your, your, your finger, your cylinder, are three tinier cylinders. Okay? And these are the bones of your fingers. And they're called... Uh, I hope I'm spelling this right. Phalanges. Okay, each each finger, each finger bone is a phalange. Phalanges are also the um, the uh, bones of your toes as well. So, what we have here are three segments to each finger. So, when I'm drawing the hand. Let's put that aside, and I'll draw the body of the hand. Again, draw the, the basic shape of that mitten. What I'm going to be doing when I get into articulating the fingers is I'm actually taking it a finger at a time. and I'm taking it a phalange at a time. See? Add a wrist to the whole thing, see? So, and that gives me a hand. So let's, let's do another pose. I'm going to do the body of the hand, okay? And I could just plant it on a wrist, like that. And then I want to add, I'm going to go in a finger at a time, really a phalange at a time. And phalange at a time. And the thumb can be hanging out down here shape that a little bit more. I'm going to darken that a little bit more. And that gives me a hand. And whatever you want your your hand doing, okay, whatever you want your fingers doing, Do it one, and your fingers can overlap too. You could have an extended pinky. Okay. 
but that's how I would animate my fingers. And that's, you know, it's, it's all about making it easy. It's all about taking something that could be complicated uh, and difficult and just, just making it easier. So, you know, and of course, as we move along, as I finish this, and you can see I started out very light and I get darker as I refine these basic shapes. But as I do that refinement, I can also, I, I could also get more detail and then I could worry about things like suggesting the bone structure beneath, suggesting each knuckle, uh, doing things like adding fingernails and, and hair and folds of the skin and other tendons and things. Uh, and just overall, just making the hand as realistic as I want it to be. Um, the other recommendation I really want to, to stress a lot is um, the, and honestly, the answer I always, I, I often give to many of the questions asked of me is just draw it. And it sounds like a flip uh, kind of an answer, but it's actually very true. Uh, and it's very true here with hands. So when people ask me, how do you draw better hands? I always say, well, really, you sit down and you draw hands. So you, you know, you, you sit down and you practice, you practice. Uh, it's always best to draw from life. So if you're ever able to um, get people to pose for you, and I recommend you, you get, you know, you, you draw other people's hands because otherwise you're just gonna be stuck um, learning how to draw, you know, your, your left hand if you're right-handed or your right if you're left-handed. Um, and you really wanna be able to draw uh, everything. So, you know, just draw hands, draw lots and lots of hands. Uh, the other recommendation I wanna make for you guys is really the, the Holy Bible of drawing hands is this book. The Book of a Hundred Hands by the great George Bridgman. And this is really a must for anybody who wants to learn how to draw hands. Uh, even if you don't read a word in here, uh, just these pictures, you know, just sitting down. And, and he has a nice, uh, Bridgman that is, has a nice simplified way of demonstrating, showing him, um, showing us what, you know, how you can break down a hand and, and really draw it without, uh, without complicating things. So um, that is the Book of 100 Hands, and I believe it's probably about like six bucks. Maybe it might be up to like 10, oh, 8.95 in the US. Um, and I, I know it's always available on Amazon, so the Book of 100 Hands. So. I'm going to be doing a part two to this because really, you know, in about 13 minutes or so, we can't really, you know, master hands completely. And there is more that I want to talk about. For example, um, I do want to go over um, not so much the anatomy of the hand, but the, the, the structure of the hand, what we're looking at in the machine of the hand. And I also want to talk about drawing the hands holding stuff. Uh, which can be uh, a little bit complicated too. So uh, we will be going over these in a part two and, and possibly a part three. Um, if this was helpful, please uh, please let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And, and please, if you have any questions, as always, let me know. Uh, if, you, if you like the video, as always, you know the drill. Please click like, subscribe. Um, Hit that bell and share, 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 share. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. And I will see you next time.